The Otai River Valley is known for its unique climate that hosts rare plants and natural habitat for sensitive species such as the San Diego fairy shrimp and Lee Bell's vireo. Largely inaccessible and unknown to the public, the valley is a hidden gem of scenic wilderness in the densely populated San Diego County. But this unique ecosystem fell victim to a catastrophic series of events. In 1917, the Savage Dam failed, smothering the floodplain with sediment and debris. Over the next several decades, the floodplain was mined for sand and gravel until the mid-1980s, with no restoration of the altered natural topography. The area was left with no defined channel, inadequate flow, and was overrun with non-native invasive plant species like eucalyptus and tamarisk. With rapid population growth in South San Diego County, mitigation planning was initiated to reduce impacts to sensitive species and habitats through restoring the Otai River Valley. The goal? To transform the area to benefit all. Native vegetation, wildlife, tribal histories, public access, utilities, trail systems, recreation, and preservation. The first primary goal is to provide mitigation for uh, future housing developments that are going on in the area. So that's really the impetus of the project is to provide mitigation to offset for impacts associated with planned development as part of the Otay Ranch general plan. That being said, I would say the second primary goal is to put together a restoration project that maximizes the ecological benefit to the lower Otay River, which is where those housing development projects are proposed so that the people living there, the wildlife living there, the vegetation living there is kind of receiving the maximum improvement. Upstream near the mouth of the Otai main stem channel, a small area still contained native vegetation like the black willow and cottonwood. SWCA restoration ecologists use this area as a reference to help guide the design of the 2016 restoration project. This is an area where we were fortunate to find it with good uh, condition of native vegetation. As you can see, these tall black willows, they are likely uh, over 50 years old. Uh, these were already here. Uh, the most problematic situation here was that its understory had been dominated by non-native plants, non-native pepper tree, non-native tobacco tree. We had a lot of non-native grasses here. So slowly we start controlling this population of non-native plants and replacing it with what is the natural scrub for these riparian areas. The Otai River Restoration Project consists of two components, the 2016 Restoration Project and the 2022 Mitigation Bank Expansion Project. The 2016 Restoration Project, referred to as the Pre-Bank Area, includes more than 38 acres of river, floodplain, and upland restoration in the most upstream portion of the river. The area was dominated by non-native plant species such as the fluvial choking tamarisk that actually increase soil salinity, as well as mounds left over from the sand mining activities limiting hydrological processes, leaving the Otai River unable to flow and function properly. Essentially, the tamarisk invasion ecology is a catch-22 because whereas tamarisk might have established in areas that were sedimented, the typical growth of tamarisk will spread from root shoots, will become really dense thickets and start trapping sediments along with uh, thatch, organic matter, and at some point you really don't have water going through the, the sites anymore. You really want to have that water under the ground. It's hard to historically understand if the tamarisk has sedimented the channel or if the tamarisk has thrived in a channel that had already been sedimented. So this is the problem we face today. That's what requires us to go uh, in with excavators and bulldozers so we can recreate the land form to reestablish a stream course again that is positive for native plants establishment. In 2018, project construction began with large-scale grading, cutting a new channel and surface preparations. We came in with bulldozers and excavators. We brought these sites to bare ground, which pretty much for us felt like a, a white canvas. We had to make decisions about plant composition, and where to install them and where to seed them. 
But in the end, all we had to do here really was to open real estate for the native plants. We're looking at a fluid mosaic of habitat types with emergent wetlands and then the typical uh, riparian scrub for these riparian areas. So now we have a diversity of scrub growing here. We got tons of new fats. We have a lot of arroyo uh, willow uh, saplings and black willow saplings. We are seeing a lot of uh, marsh plants. So these are emerging wetland plants. Uh, we got here rushes, annual herbs. Cateo starting to colonize the sites here. Diversity of annual and perennial native plants. The site is getting a very entrained and vegetation entrainment for wildlife translates into a multidimensional foraging habitat, but also it's a protection, it's a buffer against predators and even uh, excessive uh, human visitation. From that 16,000 plants that we initially uh, introduced here, they have now spread and they're colonizing the site, increasing the coverage of uh, native plants, which is in turn supporting local wildlife. The pre-bank has entered the five-year maintenance and monitoring period and through sound science and creative solutions, SWCA ecologists have actively been monitoring and tracking the progress. The monitoring program consists of collecting qualitative and quantitative data year after year. And we want to know at uh, you know, any given year where the project stands. It's important for us because in case the project is not matching project performance, so then we can take adaptive measures to correct the path of the project. Every spring, we are doing vegetation transects that is used to analyze native plant cover versus non-native plant cover, but it also gives us an index of biodiversity. So we know how many different plant species composed our palette. Additionally, we have camera traps that's monitoring the use of sites by local wildlife. We are monitoring water above surface and subsurface. We are also monitoring a recreation use of sites, uh, make sure that there is no uh, illegal recreation or uh, illegal forms of trespassing that's jeopardizing the uh, project performance. Now in the fourth year, we come here every quarter, so every three months and we do what we call the qualitative assessments. So essentially it's an inspection where our biological monitor will walk all the planting areas and take notes of no native plants. This is probably in the site that needs to be removed, as well as if there are new invaders, no native plants that had not been seen before in the site, and those will require immediate action to make sure that they don't spread and become like the detrimental to the uh, project ecology and also the project performance. Just downstream of the pre-bank, the Mitigation Bank Expansion and Trails project consists of approximately 230 acres of additional restoration of river, floodplain, and upland habitat, including depressional and vernal pool establishment. It's very easy in our industry to focus on, you know, just doing the bare minimum. And this is a project that does not take that approach. We go from the floodplain of the river all the way to the foothills. We look at the regulated aquatic resources, the adjacent aquatic resources, transitional areas, upland areas, and then think about all of the species there. So now we've got wind benefit for the ecosystem. There's an additional benefit in that the downstream area is now set up in a way that it can move through a series of restoration activities over the coming decades plus. And then on top of that, this area is within an existing preserve system, a preserve system primarily driven by uplands. Uh, and so this project brings dollars from the development into public land, inserting tens of millions of dollars onto this property that would only would not have been recovered otherwise. So with that improvement, the public will also benefit. The other exciting thing, because this is in the preserve system, it also overlaps with the city of Chula Vista, who is a partner on this project. This project has then included over five miles of formalized trails. So there's a lot of informal trails, unauthorized trails right now, but those trails will be permitted, reviewed, and installed as part of this project. So in the coming years, people will not only have access to the river valley here, they'll have access to a restored, beautiful river valley. So it's a project that we often talk about, as I mentioned, as a win-win-win, but in particular, it demonstrates the amazing opportunity between private dollars and public land, and SWCA comes in to really facilitate that. So taking the needs of the development, the needs and what we know of the ecosystem, and identifying how to maximize everybody's win. To learn more, contact us at otiriverrestorationproject.com.